composition one. Uh, today we uh, will uh, take a look at lecture seven. Uh, we will be introducing uh, a new chapter, chapter three. The main theme about the chapter is business and money. Um, <clears throat> now, when we speak about the main theme, that means we are going to uh, t talk more about business, matters of business and matters of money. Uh, that means we would eventually uh, end up um, <clears throat> gaining um, a large amount of vocabulary um, re relating to these, the, these uh, two topics. Um, <clears throat> now, one of the things that this chapter focuses on is um, free writing. Now, what, what is it about free writing that we want to learn? Free writing is a good way to uh, generate, as I wrote here, uh, generate ideas on a topic before you write. Now, r notice that we usually talk at the beginning of the lecture about something you do before you write. Um, right. <clears throat> so, uh, when you free write, you write as fast as you can without thinking too much about what you're writing about uh, or uh, where you're headed. Uh, you just write. Um, you don't need to think about grammar or vocabulary. Um, you also don't have to worry about uh, connecting your ideas. Uh, you can sometimes come up with uh, your best ideas when you allow yourself to free write. Um, let's say you chose a topic about, I don't know, pollution, and you really don't have this clear idea as to wh what you want to state in your composition or the um, article you wish to write, but you have these mixed emotions, mixed opinions, mixed ideas about pollution to state them, to organize them, to know what your, your view and your standpoint is, you, one of the ways to do that is to free write. You just take a pen or pencil and a piece of paper and you start writing whatever cross, crosses your mind. After that, you would probably end up knowing what your position is regarding this topic. So, it's a method kind of like a brainstorm, but in another way. Um, uh, or, let's say, in, 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 in a sentence type of way. Brainstorming usually involves writing anything, either sentences or bits and pieces of uh, uh, ideas or vocabulary items in, you know, circles and uh, um, probably drawings, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, in, in free writing, it's kind of the same thing, but what you do is actually you actually write uh, full sentences uh, to uh, the best of your ability. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> um, what we want to benefit from this um, uh, idea here is that free writing is a good idea to do before you write your composition or paragraph because it kind of explores your own view uh, through you, through your own writing. So you would discover that, well, you've actually, you actually have this opinion about something. You have this strong opinion, that you, a strong supportive opinion or strong um, uh, opposing opinion about a topic. So, that's a way, a method to use on your part to actually know what you're thinking. Um, this, of course, is uh, a method that could be uh, applied not just in writing a composition or an essay, but actually you can use it even in, in, in some of the assignments given to you uh, by other uh, uh, instructors in other subjects and courses. Um, so it's, it's a method. Uh, if you feel uh, that your ideas are not clear, you're not clear on your ideas, this is one of the methods that you can clear up some of the views and ideas you already have, but you really don't realize it. 
So, um, after that, we want to look at a, um, a reading passage that has a story within it, and after we read it together, we would like to think about what we just read and see if we can formulate an opinion about the event or the story we will come to read together. Now, this is all about opinion, uh, your view, and your view is personal. You might share an opinion uh, with someone else, but nevertheless, your opinion is still yours, even if uh, some other person um, agrees with it. Right. So, if you would care to turn your books to page, if you can find page 45 on your uh, textbook, Um, let's <clears throat> give this a minute, a moment to, um, to focus. Right. Right. Now, that, that, that should be all right. So, fortune or thievery. Um, um, fortune is, of course, something that... Um, uh, is related to richness and and money and wealth uh, and and good luck. Um, <clears throat> thievery is uh, stealing something that is not yours or taking something that is not yours. Right now, this was um, an article or um, an, an incident uh, that happened. And this incident was um, was written about in uh, probably a newspaper, right? And let's see what this incident was. So Columbus, Ohio, October twenty eighth, was a fortunate day for motorists driving along Interstate seventy one at about nine thirty in the morning. As a truck from the Metropolitan Armored Car Company sped down the highway, its back door blew open, and bags of money fell onto the road. When other vehicles hit the bags, the bags split open, spew over a million dollars all over the highway. It didn't take motorists long to realize that the paper swirling around them was cash. They stopped on and around the highway and scooped up handful, handfuls of money, gleefully putting a twenty, fifty, and one hundred, even one thousand dollar bills into bags, pockets, and purses. When the police arrived, they estimated that over 200 people had been helping themselves to the Bonanza. Officials, hoping to recover the money, were not so gleeful. Columbus Mayor Donna G. Reinhardt called the motorists who took the money thieves and said, May they have many sleepless nights. He stated the government will prosecute any anyone the police can find. To encourage the return of the money, Metropolitan Armored Car Company has offered a reward of 10% of all the money they receive. So far, however, they have received only $100,000 from about 30 different people. One one man gave back $57,000. Another man, however, called to say he was set for life and he was leaving town. 
Since the cash was insured and belonged to local banks, many people can't see that they are hurting anyone by keeping it. Even if the government prosecutes, it will have trouble convicting the thieves. Even if the government prosecutes, it will have trouble convicting the thieves. Probably two thirds of the uh, uh, probably two thirds of the jurors would think the defendants should have kept the money," said prosecutors. Said prosecutor Michael Miller. Now this is a story as you um, probably followed. Uh, about a truck that um, was carrying a lot of money, and something happened, uh, and the money the money fell out. Sorry, I should have moved this to the other side. Right. Right, so the money fell out, and um, the uh, people driving on the road stopped and started picking up the money. Now, the issue here is that the uh, money belonged, be belonged to banks, and uh, it was insured. That means um, the uh, money is going to be um, uh, given back by the insurance company. So everything is okay. So these people thought, well, why not, why don't we just take money, take the money, because I mean the banks are taking our money uh, anyway, and they're taking a lot of it. So it won't hurt to take some. And in another view or another opinion, people might say, no, these people took something that wasn't theirs and it just so happens they should return the money, um, insured or not, but they should because it doesn't belong to them. So there were two opinions. Some people thought the money was theirs, they found it, they took it, and it was okay, and they're okay with it. Another view said, no, the money, we need to help out, let's gather some money and return it to the people it belongs to. So these are two different views, right? Fair enough. What do you think? What would be your view in relation to giving back the money or not? Right. So that was the reading passage, and we read it together. So there were some vocabulary items in the reading passage that um, 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 you should match the, uh, the word to its uh, definition on page 46. You, you would see the exercise that deals with that. And I've already answered the... Um, the exercise for you, and you had armored uh, means protected with strong metal, split uh, means to tear open, spew, to spill, recover, to find, scoop up means to pick up, gleeful, very happy, when you're gleeful, that's another way of saying very happy, bonanza, a sudden riches. Uh, sudden riches, so you had this uh, um, um, bonanza uh, can sometimes be used for football bonanza, meaning uh, you can see football everywhere and uh, such as an event like um, uh, the World Cup, for instance, that would be a football bonanza, so it's a sudden riches. Um, uh, prosecute uh, is to charge with crime and convict is to find guilty of a crime insured, protected from loss. So these are vocabulary items and their definitions that would, it would be convenient that you learn them and learn how to use them 
And if you um, want to know how they were used, you can easily reread the, uh, the passage on uh, page 54 and see that their usage is quite simple and quite convenient. And it, they, they actually make uh, the, um, the, the article um, seem much more interesting. And if you would like to take this a step, a step further, you can go to the, uh, the place where um, gleeful, let's say, was used and replace the word gleeful with very happy. And do the same for uh, the rest of the words you find uh, from 1 to 10 and you, that you can locate in the reading passage and see what the passage would sound like. What would be more interesting to you? The first draft or the second draft? So, expressing opinion and giving reason. So now, um, we've read the passage and we've talked about uh, um, uh, an event that happened, and uh, this event just so uh, um, um, ev uh, <clears throat> provoked uh, two different views. Should the people, the motorists, keep the money, or should they return it? Do they have um, uh, a right uh, to keep the money? or they don't, um, since uh, the, the, the money is insured, of course. Um, this, the, these are views. You can, you, 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 can, you can understand that these are two, there are either, there's a view that is for, and there's a view there that is against. And you might take one, uh, of these views. You, you might support one of these views, either for or against, but nevertheless, either for or against, you would have to give reasons for your opinion. So the people who said, you know, there's no harm in, in taking the money because the money is actually insured, so we're really not taking anybody's money. There's this money that, this is money that fell in, uh, uh, on the road, and uh, we took it, and the the bank didn't lose any money. So the people who put their money in the bank eventually didn't lose any money as well. So it why not? The other view is saying no, it's just not yours. You didn't earn it that means you have no right. In either case, there was a, um, there was a reason stated for one opinion, uh, one opinion or another. So giving reasons is important in this situation. You must give a reason for your opinion. You can't just say, you know, I feel that they should return the money, but you have to say why. It's not enough to say, I, sh I feel that they should return the money, or I feel they should keep the money. Okay, that's your opinion, but give reasons for your opinion. Okay. Now, um, there's another reading passage that we would like to read together. We will read this letter together and discuss the questions as well. Right. This is a letter to the editor of a newspaper. Now, 
on October 30th, 2000, and let's say 13, or 12. Dear Editor, Regarding the article about people who don't pay taxes on money they make from small home businesses, government targets small business owners, October 23. Now that is the title of the article this person is responding to. My opinion is that the government should stay out of at least one part of our lives, our income. First of all, most people who run small businesses are honest, law-abiding citizens. Many of them have other jobs where they pay more than their share of taxes. Unlike the very wealthy, who find ways to pay almost no taxes. Others are people who want jobs where taxes are automatically taken out of their paychecks but can't find them. Secondly, the government requires too much paperwork from small businesses. If these business people have to keep the complicated records that the tax people require, they won't have time to sell old furniture, prepare food for parties or whatever their business involves. Finally, and most importantly, this is supposed to be a free country. Finally, and most importantly, this is supposed to be a free country, but the government interferes everywhere. Let us be free, at least in our own homes. Sincerely, Al Melinowski from Miami. Now, this is a letter from a person to an editor of a newspaper. And she wants to state her opinion about an article she read in the, sa in the same newspaper at a later date. And as it, it's obvious, the letter here talks about the government taking taxes from people who own small businesses. Of course, her opinion is that the government shouldn't take taxes from people who own small home businesses. And she stated why. She gave reasons. So this is an example of a good response containing opinion and giving reasons. It's not enough just to state your opinion without the ability to give examples and reasons for your opinion. You're not, you, what you're saying is not going to be persuasive. Now, look at the questions below. and think about them for a while. The first question says, how does the letter begin? What specific information does the author provide to make sure the editor knows what his letter is about? So, of course, how does the letter begin? It begins with, dear editor, because it's addressed to the editor. And it clearly states what the letter is about. It's regarding um, the article of 
uh, published by the, the the same newspaper, and the the title and date of the newspaper is given. Number two, how many paragraphs does the letter have? Um, note that the uh, no, note that paragraphs in newspapers are often shorter than paragraphs in academic writing. Of course, that's that's obvious because. Uh, it's just the way it is. Um, um, people reading newspapers would not prefer a very long paragraph. Um, number three, what does each paragraph contain? Um, you would look at the paragraphs, of course, how many paragraphs do we have? We have one, two, three, and four. Four paragraphs, very... Uh, and, and they contain information, accurate information, and examples. That's the basic thing. It gives reasons and examples um, to support the main idea, which is uh, the government shouldn't take taxes from people with low income. What, trans, um, what transitional phrases does the writer use to introduce each paragraph? What effect does this have on the follow, on the flow of the letter? Now, notice that <clears throat> um, the the um, the uh, the writer uses secondly, first, secondly, first, and secondly. to state the reasons. And then finally, here. Okay. Um, uh, the effects would be something like, finally, and most importantly, as you can see here, most importantly, uh, to give um, um, and if, uh, to to give uh, the reader an indication that this is the most important point I want to state in this whole letter. Number five: How does the writer support? How does the writer support his opinions? Of course, giving examples and using uh, effective language. Now, what we want to uh, say here is that this is a very good example of giving an opinion and giving reasons for your opinion. Go back, read the article again, read the letter again, and think about the questions below. If you can imitate this letter about a topic from your own environment, that would be wonderful. Thank you very much, and I will see you next time in Lecture 8.